The Dolphins lost to the Buffalo Bills on Sunday, 56 to 26. And as a result, they missed out on the NFL playoffs. And uh, oh, I was sad. I, I really like Tua. I really like what Miami's done, building their team. And it's kind of disappointing that in the biggest game of the year, they lost by 30 points. I mean, it's like, ugh, it's not good. It's embarrassing. It's pretty terrible. And uh, I guess really the reality is what, what boils down to, what Sunday boils down to is this, this sentence here, which is that if Sunday was a test for the Dolphins quarterback to a Tungaloa, the rookie quarterback, if it was a test, he failed. He did not deliver what needed to be done. Not only did he not win, he didn't play very well. And I, I didn't need Tua to win the game, but I needed him to play well and do something uh, to, to, to walk away feeling good about him. And I, I just didn't. He had three interceptions. He struggled to push the ball downfield. Uh, the biggest play for Miami on the day was a trick play where their backup quarterback, like a kind of their gadget athlete, threw a ball threw the ball downfield to Miles Gaskin. And I gotta say, also, if I have to watch Tua throw another screen or slant again, I'm gonna go crazy. But it was like slant, slant, two yard out, screen, screen, slant, screen, slant, screen, over and over and over again. And I'm like, guys, please. And then when he did try to push the ball downfield, it was either the ball was dropped or incomplete passes were thrown inaccurately. Or he was intercepted. It wasn't a pretty good effort at all by uh, the Dolphins on offense. And I hate saying it, but... Because, look, I love Tua. I think it's it's well documented. Tua is uh, fantastic. I love the family. love his story. I'm a big... I love Hawaii. He grew up in Hawaii. And so I, uh, I shamelessly root for Tua because of that. But, man, um, Tua's rookie year has been very, very unimpressive. When you compare the way Joe Burrow was spinning the ball and throwing the ball well downfield and accurately and making big completions, and, and then Justin Herbert blew me away this year. Like, oh my gosh. And I, I don't need Tua to be the flashiest, best player ever. But man, uh, he really struggled to, he was not explosive at all as a quarterback. And I want to prove to you guys, like, I, I love Tua. I own Tua's jersey. I only own one NFL jersey at all. I only, I've never owned a single NFL jersey until I owned this Tua Tonga Vloa jersey. I love Tua. He's my favorite player. And so I, I hate to say ill of him. I love the guy. But my goodness. Um, he, he just wasn't what I really wa- I still love the person. The quarterback has me doubtful. And I, I really the reality is that Miami has a decision coming up. They've got the number three overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft. Uh, they also, by the way, have two first-round picks. They have the number three overall pick and the number 18 overall pick. And they either are going to draft a quarterback uh, to replace Tua or build around Tua, say, you know, doubling down, saying we believe in the guy and we're going to build an offense around Tua. And uh, there's a lot of options here. Number one, you could trade Tua to another team who's happy to have a young quarterback who's late, like, uh, a team that's farther down in the NFL draft is like, we'll take a talented quarterback and we'll give you what we can for him. And then you draft probably Zach Wilson to the number three overall pick. Uh, but imagine if you don't have to spend a draft pick replacing Tua. You could probably get either Panay Sewell, uh, who if you know if Jacksonville drafts a quarterback and the Jets draft a quarterback, you could potentially draft Panay Sewell uh, with a number three overall pick. He's a Probably a generational talent out of uh, Oregon at left tackle. He's, there's a, I, I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting the name. There's an, a, a guy who was a staple in Baltimore for years. I, I'm, I'm really, I wish I wasn't blanking on his name, but if, if you said his name, I'd know who it is. There was this left tackle in Baltimore with the Ravens who played for like 15, 16 years. He was amazing. Uh, and he was kind of the, the best we've seen in a long time. Panay Sewell has a similar feeling. This guy is going to be your franchise left tackle for 15 years. He's going to be phenomenal. He's a massive dude who's also way more athletic than he should be for that size and incredibly talented and well-coached. His head coach, uh, Mario Cristobal, was a uh, lineman, and and so he is really well-coached at Oregon. And so imagine if you can draft Panay Sewell left tackle and then a guy like... And even if it's Panay Sewell's drafted by the Jets, you could draft... Um, Dante Smith, who just won the Heisman at Alabama, a great receiver. And then maybe Kyle Pitts or Jalen Waddell with the 18th overall pick. Like, you can have an amazing team built around Tua if you can use those early draft picks on offensive players. And part of the problem with Tua, I, w- I got to say, like, maybe Devontae Parker's good and he's fine, uh, but the Dolphins really have lacked... Um, talent on offense to build around Tua and help him. Mike, Mike Gusecki, their tight end, is one of their best players. 
And Mike Gusecki, love the guy. He's not one of the best tight ends in the NFL. He's overwhelmingly fine. And so part of the problem with Tua is that there isn't a lot of talent around him. And it's very possible that if you build around Tua, wow, they could take a big step forward and he could be a lot better next year. But also, you, you could draft Zach Wilson. And Zach Wilson um, did stuff in college that made me go, wow. Like eye-popping, you know, head-turning stuff. And he's polished. He throws the ball very well. Kind of a – reminds me – this is a – Kind of an unfair comparison, but with the effort and the, well, I guess with effortless nature and the ease of Aaron Rodgers, the, the way they throw the ball, Zach Wilson throws the ball in a way I could never even dream of doing. It's like, oh, it's beautiful. It literally, and I'm not a sucker for that stuff, but man, it just effortlessly and easy and beautiful and can run around. And it's it's really like, if I'm a, uh, a general manager in the NFL, I'm like kind of salivating going, hmm, like imagine what we could do with Zach Wilson as our quarterback. And so I'm on the fence. I need more time. I, I can't tell you what I would do if I was Miami. Uh, the way I do mock drafts, I don't do a mock draft trying to predict what teams are going to do because teams aren't predictable. Frankly, human beings are sometimes stupid. So I, I can't tell you what an NFL team is going to do. But when I do a mock draft, I will tell you what I would do. And so when that time comes, I'll tell you, if I was Miami, here's what I would do in the first round. I'm just not there yet. I haven't made a decision. I need to watch more film. I know we need a film analysis very soon of Tua. Should we keep him or get rid of him? Um, but I'm on the fence, and I need more time to evaluate. But I think maybe the fact that I'm on the fence is pretty telling. Uh, I shouldn't be. I, I'm like a almost almost a fanboy of Tua. And if I'm concerned about Tua and I'm considering maybe replacing him, you know it's not good. And my girlfriend has to think. My girlfriend is uh, a minimalist in the best way possible, and she um, – gets great pleasure in throwing things away. And she's got a principle, she said the other day. If it's not, I don't want to cuss on the show. If it's not an F yeah, it's an F no. It, it, when you look at some, if you're looking at your closet and you're like, oh, of course I want to wear that shirt, then you keep the shirt. And if you're not, of course I want to wear that shirt, you're going to pick something else every single time. And if you're going to pick something else every single time, eventually get rid of the shirt. And it might be the same with quarterbacks where if you're not, of course, and all in on Tua by now, that's very telling and maybe even very problematic. So, um, man, I, I, I'm I, not ready to say I'd move on from Tua yet, but it's certainly worth considering. But I also got to say, like, imagine what you could do if you don't have to waste a pick on a quarterback. And waste is a relative term because you're the Dolphins and you're building a team and you really need a young quarterback. But if you could use the pick other way, in, in another way and really build around Tua, imagine the players you could get with two first-round picks, two second-round picks, like, Oh, it's crazy. Imagine Kyle Pitts and Devontae Smith on Miami, the Miami Dolphins, or, I mean, just two-star receivers are running. Like, the, the options are limitless. And so um, Jalen Waddell, like imagine what you could do with Miami with those picks if you don't need to draft a quarterback and building around Tua. So I'm, I don't know. I'm on the fence. I'm literally kind of rambling and ranting, sharing my thoughts as I go. But Miami definitely has a decision to be made. And I'm very disappointed that Tua did not deliver, did not play well on Sunday, and that I'm sad the Dolphins missed the playoffs. I really, I love their head coach, Brian Flores. I love what they're building, and they came up just short. And it's like, oh, man, I'm so disappointed. I'm not surprised. I actually predicted Buffalo to win the game, um, but I, I'm just disappointed with the result of what happened with the Dolphins on Sunday.